Hey everybody, welcome to Harmon Garage. I'm Aaron, and today we are gonna do something a little bit different than what we have ever done before or what we normally do. But uh, we're not gonna be working in the shop. We're not gonna be working outside. We're not gonna be going on any trips or adventures or anything like that. We're gonna be having a little history lesson. And by that, I mean, I've done a lot of research. I've done all my homework, my schoolwork, and whatever. And I'm gonna tell you guys everything that I have found out about special edition Chevy trucks from 1973 to 1987. Um, I've looked at them before, just out of boredom, you know, sitting around playing on Google or whatever, just to see what I could find and what information I could come up with just because I'm a square body guy and I'm into the square body trucks but I've never taken it to this extent. And the reason I got this idea and the reason that I have taken it to this extent now is because if you saw last Tuesday's video, we got the gentleman Jim project. And when I was asked to do the restoration on the gentleman Jim, I immediately went into search mode so that I could find out everything that I could find out about the gentleman Jim so that the restoration was correct. Not just, oh, I think it's this, or oh, I think it's that, or this looks like it's that, or I saw this in this picture, so it must be right. No, we don't play those games. I wanna make sure it's 100% exactly the way it rolled off the assembly line, unless there's a couple little changes that we decide we wanna make. So, with that being said, you go online and type in 75 GMC Gentleman Jim, for instance, and you get 50, let's just throw that out there, 50 different things about the same thing on that truck. And there's a lot of people that have opinions. There's a lot of people that think they know. There's a lot of people that make stuff up, whether it be to feel important or or somebody told them and, and for some reason they believe that person without finding out if it's true or not. Or whatever the case may be. But my whole intention of this video is to get as much information on these special edition vehicles so that if anybody else decides to do what I'm doing to the gentleman Jim, they've got information that they need. And if there's anybody else that's just a square body nut that may have never heard of these special edition trucks or is interested in, in history lessons and, and a bunch of important to some, useless to others information, then you'll enjoy it. So I'm going to uh, go through and I'm gonna show pictures of each truck, different things about the truck, parts of the truck, and I'm gonna kind of do a voiceover on it as I'm showing the pictures, or I'm gonna read my script that I've written of what the thing is and put pictures over that, however you wanna look at it. Either way, I've got a lot of information, I've got a lot of pictures, and I'm gonna share it all with you guys. So, hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. This is just a little extra. It's not our normal Tuesday upload. I didn't want to use this as our normal video. It's just an extra video. If you're new to the channel or this is the first time you've seen us, we do a lot of cool stuff that's normally not like this. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave me a comment, tell your friends, whatever you want to do. I appreciate it all, but let's get to it. Okay, I'm gonna go down through the trucks in chronological order by year. And we're gonna get started with the 1974 GMC Indy 500 support truck. The company that provided the pace car for the Indy 500 usually also provided the support truck for this iconic race. In 1974, this was the case as Oldsmobile got the nod to use the 74 Hurst Olds Cutlass as the official pace car. Because of that, and the fact that Oldsmobile didn't produce a pickup truck, the parent company, GM, used the GMC trucks as the support vehicles for the race. 1974 marked the inaugural year for GMC's official track truck concept 
Previous to 74, they were just run-of-the-mill trucks to handle cleanup, towing, hauling, and other duties. With the new track truck concept, GMC made the design to match the pace car, with the pace car being the Hurstold's Cutlass with its iconic cameo white and fire frost gold paint scheme, that same scheme was transferred onto the trucks as well. As earlier mentioned, these trucks were used for a variety of different track duties which includes cleanup, towing and hauling, as well as safety and emergency vehicles. This came to a total of 52 GMC, two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive, standard cab pickups, as well as crew cabs, wreckers, and dually models. There was nothing special about the trucks themselves other than the extravagant paint jobs and decals which consisted of numbers on the roof and hood of the track trucks and the official Indy 500 decals and badging. GM thought of the advertising and marketing side of things and offered a limited edition run of replicas of these to the public. A thousand were said to be produced for sale to the public. This package included quadratone paint, rally stripe tonneau cover, inset gold grill, GMC official truck badging. No info was available on how many of these trucks were actually sold or still in existence. Next up, we have the 1975 Indy 500 official truck, which came in a red, white, and blue paint scheme. The design that ran down the sides between the upper and lower moldings was known as the strobe side striping. It also had the official Indy 500 decals on the doors just above the upper moldings, and essentially it was a standard trim package truck with option used for promotional purposes. Saginaw Steering got involved and used the 75 ND 500 truck to market their newly offered tilt wheel concept for GM trucks. The chief mechanic for the winning team was gifted one of these trucks by the Saginaw division of GM and only 500 of these were produced for sale to the general public. 1975 GMC came out with two original design, limited edition trucks that were produced solely for sale to the public. The first of these two models was called the Bo James Edition. While it is fairly hard to find a lot of information on these trucks, I did my best to get as much as I could. It has been said that the Bo James was named after James John Walker, a flamboyant politician and mayor of New York City from 1926 to 1932. This truck was GMC's most expensive offering of the 1975 model year. However, it was not a very popular package and GMC only delivered 4,000 trucks. The most interesting fact that I have found is that these trucks were built on a three-quarter ton frame with half-ton suspension. This made it a tough truck with a cushier ride. This truck was produced as a classic Sierra 1500 with the 350 cubic inch four barrel V8 or the 454 cubic inch four barrel V8. I am only aware of two wheel drive models, but it did come in a long bed fleet side and short bed fleet side models. The body was painted with a two tone paint job, which consisted of 25 Catalina blue as the body color with code 17 Saratoga silver on the hood, roof, and down the belt line. The specialty items that made this edition what it was is a special Bo James only hood ornament, hubcaps that simulate wire wheels with white wall tires, and signature deals on both signature decals on both bedsides. The interior is dressed out with full instrumentation, velour seat, air conditioning, cruise control, tinted glass, and power everything. All of this is topped off with Burlwood door panel inserts and dashboard trim. Hegarty values place them at around 35,000 in excellent condition and no less than 50,000 in concourse ready shape. The second of the two trucks I mentioned just so happens to be one of my favorite trucks, the GMC Gentleman Jim. The RPO code or option code for the Gentleman Jim is a 9A5, which is described as GMC promotional package. Much like the Bo James, it was only available in 1975 and was designed to be a tough truck with an executive type curb appeal. The Gentleman Jim is a highly optioned truck, starting with a one-of-a-kind paint scheme, with Code 86 Midnight Black as the body color, with a Code 53 Yuba Gold roof and belt line. This paint scheme is only used on this vehicle and is RPO option code 001. 
The Gentleman Jim was a new era of pickup luxury, featuring special exterior trim stripes, accent gold matched rally wheels with BF Goodrich Radial 60 Series tires, a metallic gold painted grille, upper and lower body side moldings with a gold keyed stripe. This gold keyed stripe was only used one other time, and that was in 1977. For what I found to be unknown reasons, and it also had distinctive signature Gentleman Jim decals on both rear bedsides. Inside the truck is where the luxury really comes out with RPO 63W saddle custom vinyl bucket seats with matching center console, matching door paddles with padded armrest, and vinyl door map pouches. Door trim panels and dash are accented with simulated tiger wood grain. A color match dash pad and a full setup of gauges including tachometer, 100 mile speedometer, deep pile carpeting and sound deadening material for added comfort. Also included were heat and air conditioning, AM FM stereo with 8 track tape, power steering, tilt wheel, power brakes, turbo hydromatic automatic transmission, behind a small block V8 engine, and tinted glass. There was also dealer installed accessories available. They were color keyed rug protectors, chrome pickup box tie down rods, stainless steel splash shields, series 95 SIBI high intensity quarter halogen passing beams, also known as fog lights, a special tailored gentleman Jim Tano cover, and chrome locking lug nuts. There is no distinctive information, but there is said to be between 1,000 and 2,500 of these produced. 1976 came to be with the celebration of our nation's bicentennial anniversary, and with that, the big three automakers decided to come out with special edition vehicles to commemorate this monumentous occasion. Chevrolet's idea for this was the one-of-a-kind Spirit of 76 special edition Chevy truck. Being that only 500 of these trucks were produced by Chevy, these trucks are extremely rare and not any easier than any of these other special editions to find information on. The Spirit of 76 was offered on the two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive C and K platforms, mostly in the half-ton variety. However, I have come across one K20 three-quarter ton 4x4. Is that the only one out there? It's hard to say. The Spirit of 76 is known for carrying a dual trim package as it carried both the Bonanza and the Scottsdale trim options. By that, I don't mean you could get either or, I mean it came with all options from both packages. The most unique thing about this rare specimen has to be the extremely unique interior. Highlighted by a red, white, and blue vinyl stitch bench seat, white door panels with distinct signature emblems, which is all accented with a warm blue dash pad with matching carpet and wood grain inserts on the dash. When it came to making this truck move down the road, from all the research I have found, they were available with a 350 or 400 cubic inch small block Chevy backed by a manual or automatic transmission. The Spirit of 76 came with a variety of exterior color combinations and being that I am led to believe only 500 were produced, Having so many color combinations makes each one of these even more rare. The color scheme I know of were light blue with a patriotic red, white, and blue design in the belt line, blue with white in the belt line, blue with silver in the belt line, white with blue in the belt line, and I came across only one that was completely light blue. I'm not saying this is every bit of information out about this truck, but it's all I've been able to find. All in all, it's an over-the-top, cool special edition truck that I feel safe in saying that we would all like to have one. 1976 wasn't only the bicentennial of the great US of A, but it was also the year that held the Summer Olympics in Montreal, Canada. GM decided to produce a commemorative Olympic edition truck in both the Chevy and GMC platforms. These trucks had a body color of OOC code ZE2, special white paint with a red hood and body line stripe. In the body line stripe there was an Olympic decal. On the GMC it was in the rear and on the Chevy it was in the middle or more towards the front of the bed. 
There was also a unique Olympic hood ornament, along with an Olympic edition sticker found on the vent windows. They came with mandatory Canadian badging. The interior was a mix of white and dark ox blood cloth, and that pretty much rounds out the unique features of the truck. This special edition truck came in Sierra Grande trim for the GMC and Scottsdale trim for the Chevy models, which means it had chrome grille, small style west coast mirrors, chrome front bumper, wheel opening moldings, and rally wheels on the C10 version. All of these trucks came with the standard 165 horsepower, 350 cubic inch V8, and there were a total of 630 commissioned with code ZE2, Special Olympic White Paint Packages. I'm going to go through the years of the official Indy 500 trucks as I go through the years of the Special Edition trucks in order. With that, since we are in the 76 models right now, I will go over it. The 1976 official Indy 500 truck was pretty basic. It had a much more interesting paint job with a Phoenix style bird decal represented on the hood and a very unique swooping eagle decal design down both sides of the truck. Toted the GMC official truck badging and decals. The 76 model was used to showcase newly available forged aluminum wheels. 500 of this model were produced for sale to the public. The 1976 Impact Edition is often confused with the official Indy 500 trucks or more commonly referred to as Indy Haulers and the Spirit of 76. The Impact Edition GMCs were produced by Motortown Corporation. The basic package included wheel flares, a front air dam, dual custom mirrors, and custom striping. You could also top it off with a roof air dam the custom striping starts on the hood, but the real uniqueness of it happens in between the upper and lower side moldings with the stripe down the side known as the strobe side striping. The stripes were available in many different color options, but the most well known was red, white and blue, and orange and red. This package was offered as a short bed or long bed truck and could also be had in two wheel or four wheel drive and in half ton or three quarter ton options. You could also select from a list of standard GMC solid colors or available two-tone or deluxe two-tone combinations. Other options for the Impact Edition package were dual rectangular driving lights, special painted cargo box interior, Delco AM FM 8-track stereo with two speakers, or any other radios from Motortown Corporation. Then you'd get to pick rally wheels with 60 series radial tires, for C1500 models and other special wheels and tires depending on the models, including forged aluminum wheels on the three quarter ton. Last but definitely not least, you could select available power steering, automatic transmission, air conditioning, tilt steering wheel, rear step bumper, and any of three great looking interiors plus bucket seats. I was unable to find a number of how many were actually produced, but all in all, this truck is really neat. In 1976, and again in 1977, another special edition vehicle graced the gravel or asphalt of Chevy and GMC dealerships. But this time, was it not only available in both Chevy and GMC, but also on a platform we haven't yet gone over. The SUVs known as the Chevy Blazer and the GMC Jimmy. And not only that, but it was a camper. If you have never heard of this, or are just now catching up, these are known as the Chevy Blazer Chalet and the GMC Jimmy Casa Grande. To break it down, these vehicles were an SUV with a slide-in camper. As far as the drivetrain of this Overlander SUV goes, they were available with the 350 cubic inch V8 or the small block 400 V8. Behind that could be a 3-speed hydromatic automatic transmission or a four-speed manual transmission. Most were produced as conventional four-wheel drive, but the automatic transmission models could be ordered with the full-time all-wheel drive option. The Chalet and Casa Grande were built as a collaboration between General Motors and recreational vehicle manufacturer Chinook Mobile Lodge Incorporated. The camper on the back is designed to be permanently attached, and the space between the passenger cab and camper in rear is open, allowing for it to be a walkthrough. 
The camper has a pop-up top roof that allows for it to accommodate people up to 6 foot 5 inches tall and comes standard with two beds. However, additional drop-down beds were available as an option. The standard options were everything a real outdoorsman would need, like two beds, seating for four, a small dinette table, a sink with onboard water supply of five gallons, a two-burner gas stove, and an ice box. Not to be confused with the order option of a refrigerator that came with a second battery. Along with five-gallon water tank, they also came with a five-gallon LPG tank. All the camper windows have tinted glass and are also covered with color keyed curtains or drapes. The floor and overhead area are covered with indoor-outdoor carpeting, and the walls are covered in padded vinyl. A snap-on vinyl cover was provided for the cab to camper joint. The camper also has two roomy storage compartments, one with hanging wardrobe capabilities. There were three available packages. Package A includes all items in the base package with the addition of a 5000 BTU LPG heater. Package B includes all items from the base package and package A with the exception of the ice box which was replaced with a three-way refrigerator. The fridge can be run on LPG, battery, or AC-DC hookups. Package C. This package includes everything from packages A and B and base packages but also includes two overhead bunks that are allowed for sleeping for four. From all the research I have done and information that I have found, a total of 1,787 Blazer Sh Chevy Blazer Chalets were produced and the Casa Grande had considerably lower numbers. Up next is the 1976 to 1979 GMC Royal Sierra. The Royal Sierra isn't much of a special truck or a limited edition as the other ones in this video are. It is unique in its own rights. The Royal Sierra package was a special trim offered as an end of year promo package that was comparable to the much better known Chevy Bonanza. The Z62 RPO code trim package was discontinued after 1979 and a Z84 or YE9 were the available trim package that came with this option. Only around 500 GMC Royal Sierra sold in its three-year run. Moving on, from 1976 to 1981, Chevy produced the Chevy Sport. The Chevy Sport was the longest production run of GM Special Edition trucks. At first starting in 1976, the Chevy Sport was offered exclusively as a step side. As the run of the Chevy Sport went on and years passed, it was also offered in a fleet side option. The RPO code or option code for the Chevy Sport was Z77. In order to add this option to your truck order, it had to have RPO code seven, Z62, which is Scottsdale trim package. The drivetrain options were vast, as you could get pretty much any engine option Chevy offered, including the 250 inline 6. 350 cubic inch V8 two barrel, which were the standard options. Other options were the 350 cubic inch four barrel and the 454 big block V8. And then there was the small block 400 cubic inch V8 that was only available in the 4x4 models. Speaking of which, the Sport was available in the C and K lines, which were two wheel drive and four wheel drive options. Special add ons that were exclusive to the Sport were a signature hood ornament, rally wheels, and a deluxe front bumper. As the Chevy Sport evolved over the years, the simple white stripes that started in 1976 were traded out for multicolored body designs. By its demise in 1981, it was advertised to come with brushed aluminum cab back moldings with a Scottsdale package that included a full width seat with GM's thickest padding and softest vinyl upholstery. I was unable to find any information on how many were produced through the years, but it was definitely a neat little truck. 1976 was a big year for special edition trucks from GM. We are finally moving on to the 1977 model year. 1977 is a unique year because all the upper and lower trim molding was painted with a yellow stripe instead of the traditional black stripe. There are many myths about why this was the case, but I have found no information to confirm any of them. The yellow color that was used was also used on other trim and badging and certain hubcaps, which 
was GM Okra. The first 1977 year model special edition truck I'm going to go over is the 1977 GMC Indy Hauler. 77 marked the fourth consecutive year that GM provided the official support vehicles for the 61st annual Indy 500 race. Because of this, GMC marked a special occasion with a more than usual unique special edition truck. This was the first hot rod pickup to come from the Indy 500 program. These trucks were the first to come with any type of body modification, which included front and rear fender flares, a lower front air dam. The 77 Indy haulers were painted black and white with a red pinstripe. 77 was the first year that they moved the official Indy 500 decals onto the front fenders. GMC commissioned 500 replicas of the official support truck in both step side and fleet side models, equipped with a 6.5 foot bed. An 8 foot bed was also reserved for the fleet side models. Both C10 two wheel drive and four wheel drive options were offered in the replicas. Next on the list, we have the 1977 GMC Desert Fox. The Desert Fox was available in step side and fleet side pickups in two wheel drive or four wheel drive, long bed, and short bed options. Unlike any of the other special editions we have gone over, the Desert Fox package was also available on the GMC Jimmy. This package was produced by Hickey Enterprises in close collaboration with GM. It consisted of a full custom paint scheme with a buckskin base and a five color stripe package. These were all desert tones of medium buckskin, russet, dark red, light mahogany, and deep regal blue. The striping was used over the hood, fenders, doors, and bedside panels. The Desert Fox pickups get their rugged good looks from the special equipment package, PA6, also known as wagon wheels, painted buckskin, and equipped with a bright metal trim ring. Buckskin colored top roll bar with dual civvy lamps, painted to match brush guard, and front end guard equipped with chrome tow hooks and dual high intensity civvy lamps. Bright Desert Fox identification badging on each side of the front fender and a sporty big grip leather wrapped steering wheel. Other additional Hickey Enterprise accessories were also available. These were available with red or buckskin interiors and could be had with tilt steering and air conditioning. Once again, I could not find a definitive number of how many Desert Foxes were actually made. Next, I will move on to the little lesser known 1977 GMC Sarge. The GMC Sarge option was not only a special edition pickup truck, but it was also offered in the GMC Vandura vans, as well as the GMC General Class 8 trucks. Since this video is about special edition pickup trucks, I'm going to stick to what I know about that. The Sarge option was only available as a three quarter ton truck, but was available in two wheel or four wheel drive. It's a tough minded vehicle with a motor town package design with the buyer who wants style, convenience, and practical features all in one great truck. The sides of the Sarge came adorned with electric silver paint and tritone, tritone orange red and maroon stripes with a distinctive Sarge nameplate on each side of the rear bedside panels. The bed is trimmed with metal side rails with color inserts which is matched to the special hood ornament that is hanging out up front. The Sarge came with forged aluminum wheels wrapped in raised white leather 10 16 5 tires. After noticing all of this, you walk over and open the door to find an in-dash communication system that consists of an AM, FM, 8-track stereo, and CV radio with a special leather wrap steering wheel. You could order a Sarge with any option available on the GMC 2500 pickups, such as automatic transmission, power brakes, power steering, and any available engine for pickups as well as any available trim level. Through the research I have done, less than 1500 of these trucks were made and there are very few still known to exist. GMC Foxy Sierra is the next GMC truck on the list and there is so little info out there on it that I don't even know, other than the telltale signs on the body, what year it was produced. 
This is known to be the most unknown of all the limited edition trucks. Built by a third party company in Elkhart, Indiana called Alpha Vehicles Incorporated. It was said to be a spiced up Sierra. Only information I was able to locate on it was it had a unique hood, a three part side stripe package, custom interior with unique upholstery, carpet, and bucket seats with a console mounted ice box. Most were step side bed with solid paint color. There was an optional bed mounted roll bar with driving lights. They came with a CB radio, 8-track, AM FM radio, and were powered by a small block V8 with automatic transmission. This is all the information that I was able to find on this truck, and because of that, I am extremely intrigued to know more. Moving on to 1978 and back to the Indy Hauler. In 1978, Chevy got the nod to perform the duties of track trucks. This broke the five-year streak held by GMC. This truck was a clone of the 77 GMC with the fender flares and chim spoiler, also carrying the body color front bumper. They were painted red and white and graced with a red and orange stripe. None of these were made available to the public. Back to GMC we go with the inception of the GMC Street Coupe. This option package could be ordered on Sierra Fleetside and Stepside pickups, as well as Jimmy's and Suburbans all of which were offered from 1978 to 1980. It could be recognized by its ZY5 two-tone paint scheme, custom striping, and a unique hood ornament. They were offered either with the 140 horsepower, 350 cubic inch V8, or the 205 horsepower, 454 cubic inch V8 engine. It was outfitted and built with passenger comfortability in mind, which caused it to be quite a bit more expensive than other pickups of its day, with a price tag that reached into five-digit territory. Now we're going to talk about what I consider to be the biggest unicorn of them all, the GMC Mule of 1979. I have not even been able to find an actual picture of one of these trucks, only the animated ad that I am showing you here. They are said to be available on all GMC pickups, including the six-cylinder models. Solid oak stake rails on the bed sides, distinctive spoke wheel covers, body side, hood and tailgate stripe decals, along with the exclusive model identification mule decals. These were only said to be available for order from 19 Chicago area dealerships. Also in 1979 was the GMC Amarillo. The 1979 GMC Amarillo came in three option packages. The base Amarillo, the Amarillo GT, and the Amarillo Cowboy Cadillac. All three of these option packages were built by, a Bar by American Coach Corporation out of Warren, Ohio. The cost for the conversion was anywhere between $450 and $2,300 based on what options you chose. The first of three, or base Amarillo model, offered yellow and orange red paint with stripes and Amarillo identification decals on the bedsides. It also had LR60 BF Goodrich tires. The second option, or Amarillo GT, added the LR70 BF Goodrich radials wrapped around fin turbine wheels. The front end really cut through the air with a color match front air dam and then a roof spoiler to let the air go off the top. It also had chrome side pipes and a leather wrapped steering wheel. The third option was the Cowboy Cadillac, which included all base and GT options, but with a plusher, more comfortable interior, matching upholstery, door panels, headliner, and a trucker lounge seat, brushed metal inserts on the driver's side instrument panel, and upper door panels. It came with a 100 horsepower or 100 mile per hour speedo and a 5,000 RPM tack. Extra interior features include air conditioning power windows and door locks, speed control, and a signal searching, touch-activated Delco radio with cassette player. With Delco's power-assisted stoppers, it cut down on the sliding and bouncing that plagued the competitors' trucks. The Amarillo was said to handle significantly better than the identical 454 Street Coupe. A lot of the improved handling was credited to the new Goodyear GT radials. The Amarillo was equipped with an upgraded 240 horsepower 454 cubic inch V8 paired to a turbo 400 with a 370 gear and locking differential outback. 
With that combination, Hot Rod Magazine reported a 15.6 second quarter mile, which was the best recorded time for a pickup truck of that year. 1979 was advertised as the last year for a fun street pounder as the feds were upping regulations for the 80 model year. In 1980, the Indy Hauler once again had a total makeover from the previous years. This Indy Hauler was painted white with a blacked out grille, black bottom trim, and black cab trim. Once again, it had flares and a chin spoiler, and along with the Phoenix decal on the hood, it was also the first time the words Indy Hauler were the decals on the bedsides. GMC produced a limited run of trucks offered to the public, available in short or long bed, fleet or step side. Also in 1980 was the Chevy Custom Deluxe Harman Garage Edition. This truck is so extremely rare that it is said there is only one in existence. The Harman Garage Edition Custom Deluxe came with only the bare essentials in the interior with a vinyl saddle colored floor covering with matching door panels, sun visors, and a slightly different shade plush diamond stitch bench seat. As far as gauges, it is equipped with the standards, as well as an inoperative speedo and an ashtray mounted tack. On the outside, it is dressed up with upper and lower body moldings, fender opening trim, front and rear painted bumpers, and matching rally wheels. But the dead giveaway that it is the true Harman Garage Edition C10 is the simulated patina hood and signature Harman Garage decals on both doors. It is powered by a high output performance 307 cubic inch V8 that puts the power through a 700R4 transmission to a 308 gear. With headers, 3 inch pipes and single chamber mufflers, this baby really sings. And with the code 12 frost stripe paint, when this one hums by, it's no more than a blur. Now that my fun little joke is over, with that I'll move on to the 1981 Indy Hauler. This was the first year of the newly redesigned body. No chin spoilers or flares were used due to the new, more aerodynamic design. The truck was painted silver and black with red, yellow, and orange accent stripes. The 1981 Chevrolet Roland Rebel brings up the next topic of discussion. The Roland Rebel was commissioned to a third-party company named Choo Choo Customs out of Chattanooga, Tennessee in close collaboration with Chevrolet. These were very specific as they were only offered a single cab, short bed, two wheel drive, fleet side trucks. Due to this truck coming out during the initial rush of the emissions generation, it was equipped with the 305 cubic inch V8 engine. Special features included roofline spoiler, front air dam, aerodynamic side steps with custom mag wheels and a chrome rear bumper. The Rolling Rebel had a silver paint scheme overlaid with charcoal and red graphics. The inside had a one-off red upholstered interior with corresponding dash inserts. No more than 200 of these special edition trucks were produced. The 1983 Indy truck had no special features. It was just a standard truck with a five shades of brown paint job and one year only Indy 500 decal package. The amount of special edition trucks really started to dissipate as the years went on. By the mid-80s, there was all but none left to talk about. In 1984, Chevy came out with the Snow Chaser. The Snow Chaser is another ultra-rare model, being that it was only offered for one year and only available in snowy states and wintry areas. Due to the inclement conditions and salt, very few specimens of this unique package survived. Everything I have found says that the Snow Chaser option was offered by dealers and the base truck was ordered with red and black special paint, Snow Chaser option. The red and black was separated by a yellow gold stripe and extra protective layers were put on the lower paint. This special paint option came with an additional charge of $258. The Snow Chaser trim was was performed by an upfitter or custom truck builder such as American Coach Corporation that added the additional bed flaring, lighting, and decals. The Snow Chaser was only produced in single cab, half ton, 4x4 models with the Scottsdale trim, trim package and a 305 cubic inch or 350 cubic inch engine. Just over 2,500 of the Snow Chasers were made. 
Before I break this one down, I want to make sure to say that there is a letter signed by a GM executive that states that Chevrolet never produced this truck. Although there is magazine ads, and I personally have seen one in person. With that being said, I introduce to you the 1985 Chevy Outdoorsman. The Outdoorsman was a specific exterior color of option code 9B7 Smoky Mountain Blue with the 23C Blue Deluxe cloth interior. Most were short wheel based with 31 10 50 15 all terrain tires and came in the Scottsdale trim package. The truck's Outdoorsman logo is worked into a unique silver pinstripe that travels all the way down the side of the truck. Three options of this package were offered. The hunting package, the fishing package, and the camping package. The hunting package consisted of a Winchester Model 94 XTR 3030 with a commemorative medallion in the stock, a Winchester hat, shooting glasses, Doskasil Deluxe gun case, magazine with Outdoorsman package ad, Tasco W 4x32 scope with Holden 751 iron cider scope mounts. The fishing package consisted of a Boron BHV casting rod with Ambassador Ultra Mag Plus casting reel, a Penn 650SS saltwater reel, Bass Pro 7 foot rod, a Zepco 2020 Sandcast reel, and Power Plus rod, a Chevy Outdoorsman jacket, a Chevy truck hat, a pair of Roland Martin Pro View glasses, Fisker's fillet knife, a 750-piece lure kit, and a Plano 1162 Magnum Tackle Box. The camping package consisted of a 12 by 12 foot by 10 foot Bass Pro Shops Outdoor Family Sky Dome Tent, Sun Arctic Portable 12 Volt Cooler Warmer, 45-piece Camper's Kitchen, and Bass Pro Shop Sleeping Bag with a Brinkman Rechargeable Lantern. 209 rifles were commissioned from Winchester. Eight went to GM executives, one went to Dick Buckus for doing advertising for the truck. Less than 200 outdoorsman package trucks were sold, all of which were the hunting package option. And last but not least, we have the 1987 GMC California Sundancer. This package was exclusively offered in Southern California. They were bright yellow with a lower two-tone of gunmetal gray separated by a blue pinstripe. They came with 15-inch Sprinter Mag Western wheels wrapped in BF Goodrich Sport radials. A quality ride was brought to you by Bilstein Shock Absorbers. Special features included Smittybilt dual tube front and rear bumpers, driving lights, sunroof, and a roll bar. If you guys are still watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it interesting, informative, and fun. If there's anything that you know that I was unable to find or don't know, Go ahead and leave it down in the comments below and maybe someday I'll make another video like this and update it. If not, anybody that goes through and reads the comments will see what you put and uh, that may help them out, which is at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do here. So um, if anything that I said was wrong and you can prove it, put that in the comments too, because I need to know the difference and somebody else may also. But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be able to do this. Y'all have a good one. We'll see you next time.